So welcome everyone. I'll call the meeting order. It's five oh six. Everyone is here except for Meta and Kaya, who are both excused. Uh, so myself from Parks and Rec and LA Gardening Engineering and the guests. Welcome. Uh, would you like to make any public comment? Uh, no. no. I would be happy to introduce myself. Uh, sure. I'm, I'm Josh. Yeah, relatively new to Kingston near year and change. Um, Work in sustainability and was just interested in how this all works. Super. I spent a little bit in city government on the other coast. Oh, excellent. Well, welcome. Josh, your last name just on the Very good. Great. Feel free to contribute at any time. I would welcome you at the table, but it doesn't seem like it's happening. <laughs> <laughs> Consider yourself at the table. Um, are there any modifications to the agenda? Yes, I attended in person. Oh. Are there any modifications to the agenda? Oh, the agenda. Sorry. Okay. Minutes. Okay. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, no, no modifications to the agenda. Yeah, I, just, I, I got wanna, that already. So okay. Okay. Oh, okay. One thing at a time. For the agenda, I do want to talk about the meeting time. So we can do that under new business. Um, any other modifications? Okay. I, would, I would like to bring something up under new business okay. uh, about the uh, farmer's market, an idea that struck me. I wouldn't mind floating and see if there's something that the group can do. All right. And then object to either of those changes to the agenda. Any others? Okay. Uh, are there any comments, modifications to the minutes? That's what I meant to say. Sorry about that. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I uh, attended in person, but it's a bit Right, we got that. Right. Also, this did I carry something else over? Yes. Yeah, that right. was from the previous. That's not from a previous. So well, that, that, no. that's out. I also added the word position in the repair cafe. So oh, it oh. says the repair cafe coordinator is now filled. Okay. Is this that could be my yeah, right. lasagna, now they're filled. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Well, they did. So make sure it's up to um, on the second page, I just saw uh, under bike shares, which is 6D. 6D. Um, we reported that the resolution regarding bike shares at the Common Council Lower Levels Committee meeting. That's an incomplete sentence. Yeah, okay. Truly reported that the resolution regarding bike shares at the Common Council Lower Levels Committee meeting was adopted. You can say four were put it on. Oh, it's a solution. Was. Yeah, we want to just send it one on. Okay, great. Uh, there, this first line under seven says the mayor's public hearing is being held February 23rd. That seems like a carryover. Yeah, yeah that's a carryover. Sure. Um, now you know my methodology. <laughs> Works yeah, smart. Okay. Uh, where, where? This mayor's public hearing thing. Oh, yeah. Seven A. Yeah, these don't get picked up on a spell check. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Um, under organic management plan, the second to last sentence it starts with there are presently 288 people presently. It's a lot of presently. Presently registered for the program. There are presently 28 people presently registered. 28. 288. Sorry. Oh, no, 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 no. 288. Yeah, yeah, I thought I heard 288. There are presently 288 people presently registered. You only need Oh, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, and there's a missing word here. Under new business, Kingston Point project may include elevating, elevating a flooded parking area. Any other modifications? Uh, I have something for Repair sure. Cafe. So the yeah. Repair Cafe coordinator position has been filled for several months. I think what I was talking about last time is okay. that her role, the funding they had for it is starting to expire. Oh, so they're uh, yeah. So certain uh, cafes are like yeah. donating tips they get to her position. Um, so yeah. So uh, but, uh, Susie Frommer is her name. But what do you want him to say? Is that it's just that's it's not it's now filled. It's, it's the repair filled. cafe coordinator role is running out of funding yeah, and seeking funding sources. The funding is running out. Something to that effect? Yeah. Sounds. Yeah. Any others? 
Give me a motion to accept the May minutes as amended. I move. Count, can we get a second? Second. Same. All in favor? Aye. Anyone opposed? No. All right. Thank you. And thank you, Kevin, for putting this together. <coughs> All right. Old business, refrigerants. No movement. Nothing at all from the state. So unless someone else has something on the refrigerants, I have no, no report on Just uh, new refrigerants to start coming out. What oh, is that? Uh, it's like an alphabet soup, but. <laughs> and the reality is, you could say anything that would be okay. <laughs> 50 million. Uh, uh, just. Oh, uh, my exact time. So we're getting ready for new stuff that is mildly flammable <laughs> as they get away from uh, you know, the global warming potential. Are you saying mildly as in instead of moderately flammable or highly flammable, it's mildly? Yeah. It's like it's propane. propane type of thing. Yeah, uh, it could be a butane or a propane, uh, but they're shifting to that new refrigeration here. And this will be readily available? Uh, it looks like they're going to be ramping it up. Oh, cool. But mandatory soon, right? Can I just ask a quick question on that, Julie? Yeah. On uh, <clears throat> the program, it's been a while since we discussed the details of it. Sorry about the song. I have nothing to do about it. <laughs> um, that's what I said. <laughs> <laughs> the, is it the goal to like phase out some of the refrigerants that are phasing out? Is it just to assess that? And if there are certain refrigerants that are being phased out, is that also, is that gonna be something? Yeah. And is there somewhere where I can go and read uh, more information on that? Right now, the only thing I could send you the application. Uh, oh. That's all I have. Uh, I'm not even in contract yet, but generally it was like a five point prop, uh, deliverable, which was, Oof, this has been a while now. Inventory the refrigerants that the municipality is currently using, both in structures and vehicles. Create a refrigerant management plan. Don't know what that looks like yet. Uh, hold at least one or several amnesty days a year for the public, which we do in further affair, but pay for that. Um, uh, create uh, and maybe something like a refrigerant procurement. Well, you guys need to help me out here because the two of you know it. Procurement policy, uh, procurement policy, public outreach, uh, inventory, amnesty. So fun. A's for apple. A's for apple. B's for banana. Would it be helpful just to have those listed on the? Meeting minutes, or just in maybe after the refrigerants? Just well, you can put them in the minutes, yeah, yeah. in the minutes. Um, or yeah, actually, if you go back, yeah, no, I can probably the other minutes. But this would be something mm -hmm. that would be nice for you to have it all over. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, that would work. <laughs> Actually, we'll take them. Uh, no, we're looking for some news from the archives. <laughs> I can bring it up in like one second. I have access to all my files. Sorry, I don't know. Okay. It's okay. It's important. Right. Yeah, I'm curious. I only ask because I want to learn about refrigerator R11. And I'm going to go read some things about R11 tonight. Which one is that? What's my homework? Oh, what's the R11? I don't know the name, but uh, I'm used to R22. Right. Schooling equipment. Right. right. And, uh, oh, okay. No, I just remembered the fifth one. It was, okay. We were transitioning. Transition. We were like starting our transition. We were funding our transition from like yes. whatever we're using now to whatever is more sustainable. Okay, great. Inventory. Amnesty days. Yeah. Outreach and education. Yeah. Got it. Management policy. And transitioning. <laughs> Inventory. 
Procurement is transition because in order to transition, we have to procure the more sustainable. Okay, okay, that's worth it. Um, okay, got it. Amnesty days, public outreach and engagement, and education, and internal policy. Yeah. Okay. So I'm waiting for DC to finalize a contract, and then I'll be bringing folks together that love refrigerants and want to know more about it, and then we yeah. start this whole process. Actually, I think we we budgeted to bring somebody on. Did we? I was budgeted for a refrigerant manager, and that was like the idea was floated that I would do the refrigerant management, but we didn't really actually okay. figure that out. All right. Still to be determined. And I don't know if you're about refrigerants. So. All right. Anything else on refrigerants? How about repair cafe? All right. So we had our. Um, then on the 17th, Karen was there as one of our first customers. <laughs> um, and yeah, it was, a, it was a nice day. We actually had two new coaches from Kingston. Okay. So, you know, in the past, we've had coaches just kind of come from different parts of the Hudson Valley. So these two of them are in Kingston and they're interested in volunteering again and getting involved in the bike repairs with Bike Friendly Kingston and their wine yeah. visiting clinic. So there's a lot of positives that came out of that. Um, the church, Clinton United, was glad to have us back as well. It was our first cafe there since like, I don't even know, 2018, 2019. Um, Cause they were going under construction and they that's when we moved to Clinton United. Um, so now we're gonna try to alternate cause we do recognize the accessibility of United Methodist Church where people are just walking and they see the sign and they go home and bring stuff back. Um, and with that though, I do want to bring up funding for a fair cafe because that is an issue I'm running into. Um, I personally am contributing my own money to a fair cafe. Um, every time we have a cafe, there's lunch or pizza. I pay for that for the coaches and volunteers. Um, I buy them coffee in the morning. Um, and then also if any parts are used, we do suggest people replace them. So like a switch or a fuse or um, any like sort of like wire wrapping, um, but they don't, they don't always contribute. We do suggest it for the parts. So like, for example, last cafe, I spent $80 on pizza. Um, the coffee was broken even on, but that's it. So I lost $80. I'm just saying um, some cafes do get sponsored by Climate Smarts. I don't know if that's an option. I don't know what our budget is or when the budget season is or when we can apply for funding, but I did want to raise that with everybody and just let you know it's coming to taxing endeavor for me. And so yeah. I can answer a couple of those questions. Okay. The first is we don't currently have a budget, um, but that's just because we didn't put in for a budget for this year. There's been other years where we have put in for a budget. Uh, and that's definitely an option. Uh, we would need to submit any kind of uh, request by August. Um, August, the council goes over, the, or the mayor develops his recommended budget. Then it goes to the council. The council ultimately votes in October or November. Um, so in the past, this, this commission and CAC have asked for budgets. Now, that being said, the budgets have been extremely minimal, like 250, um, but they've never been questioned. $250? Yeah, you said $250. That's it. Right. $250. $250. pennies. It was for like printing pamphlets and things. Yes. But like, I would say, so anything minimal is not going to be questioned at all. It will be questioned, but I'll have a good answer. Well, let's say the you typically, depending on where I get pizza or coffee or how many coaches sign up to volunteer that day and how many church volunteers, you know, it's around 60 to 80 plus 40 for coffee and donuts in the morning, 80 plus 40. Um, and then I also buy my own like pens, pencils, tape, stickies for like signage. Um, I bought these nice easels this year for all the categories, but let's just say base the food that's 120. There's the cafes are bi-monthly, so there'll be six a year. That's 720 right there just for the food. Um, so what is a budget that you think we could ask for? I think, well, let me put this out there. 
there aren't currently any commissions that get a regular budget that I'm aware of. There's 22 commissions. The times that we've asked for budgets for this or CAC, they've given to them without a question, and the budget goes through my office's budget. I would say if it's a thousand dollars or less, there would probably be no no qualms about it. If it was more than that, it would be like, well, you've never asked for money before. Why do you suddenly need a thousand dollars? Yeah. Um, but the reality is, with justification at all, I could have convinced them. So yeah. as long as I have justification, and if it's an itemized justification. They can say no, but it would be silly to say no, especially for such a drop in the bucket. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and John was putting this bill himself, and that also includes like printed flyers and stuff. And there is a kind of rift happening with Sustainable Hudson Valley because they kind of claimed to be the fiscal sponsor or kind of head of work under you know all the repair cafes, but not financially. So it's like uh, they'll it's help us. <laughs> so like the coordinator will host like you know monthly Zoom meetings for all the coordinators, and we'll talk about things and um, so make sure everyone has a welcome kit or you know there's other things they do, but not that. So here's the th the stipulation about having it go through the city budget mm -hmm. is that I can't just give you cash to go buy pizza on a Saturday. Yeah, that's it. So reimburse. Right. I'm no. not going to do that either. I don't know. Okay. So I have to, in advance, get a purchase order for Plaza Pizza, whoever, okay. and purchase it. And I have to justify that through the purchasing department, which is fine. But like materials and supplies, like pens, et cetera, whatever. We, we work with WB Mason and I can get you something the next day. Uh, but like anything else besides what you could get from like Staples. Mm -hmm. Which we use WB Mason, but like anything else besides that would be a little bit more complicated and certainly not instant. And whoever doesn't get paid for 60 to 90 days, like the vendor doesn't get paid for 60 to 90 days, all that, if that's still all good for work for folks, we can go this way. Other, like that just needs to be understood that, like, if it's something expensive, I have to actually get three quotes for it. Mm -hmm. Three quotes for pizza? <laughs> no, not pizza, but. If it's okay. over a thousand, like we wouldn't move you over a thousand, but yeah. Okay, so I mean, this is what other people think about asking for a budget. I think that's a good use. Oh, yeah, she shouldn't have to pay for some. No, yeah. Okay, so what we'll about say, like above and beyond? Um, I will say, Climate Smart Kinks and logos on all the flyers that go out. It comes from um, sometimes the actual event comes from the Sustainable Hudson, or sorry, the Repair Cafe Hudson Valley page, but I put it on our Climate Smart page and I let everyone know like we are a co-sponsor. Yeah. Um, oh, that's one of the things we had a budget for recently was paying for the person who designed the, budget, the, the logo. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. That was the last time we had a budget. Yeah. Um, is Repair Cafe eligible for the ARPA events grants? The five thousand dollars. We looked into it, and they said no because I don't remember why. But they said no. Susie Frommer, the coordinator, looked in it to it for me because I didn't have the time. She said but no, and I don't know why. Unless she's wrong. Well, I know face. Be. Do you know who she talked to? Yeah, who she talked to? I don't know. Who she talked to. We'll look into it. Okay. Because that would be better. Mm -hmm. It feels like if we're gonna ask for a budget. We should consider asking for a budget for multiple things. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I, I, if we're going to ask for money, let's fund a few things instead of just for. I mean, obviously, Repair Cafe, you should not be paying for your things, but or you should not be paying for with your own money. Let's ask for some money and have multiple items. Yeah, like if there's something for, that could benefit for the Earth Fair next year, like tabling for Climate Smart or whatever. So, um, this. We should. I'll put this on the agenda for next month because then we'll just need to submit something for August. But if folks want to think about other things that we want to want to ask for in budget, I'm going to be able to itemize that. And if you could get me like an itemized what you would want from Fair Cafe, that would be great. And so we'll circle back on that in July. If that would be for everyone. Mm -hmm. I also have one question I would ask, and I think you answered it, but I just want to clarify was that there, there is a problem with. Um, sustainable Hudson Valley acting as a fiscal sponsor. Yeah, like they barely don't, they barely have 
funding for the coordinator position right. to keep Susie going. Um, and they've said several times, like they don't have money to be giving to cafes. Um, they do other things, like they sent us all iFixit kits for like the computer yeah. repair, phone repair station. Um, but yeah, there's over 40 something cafes now across Hudson Valley. Um, so it's a big endeavor. But I know that a few of them get sponsored by their mm -hmm. climate smarts because we also get points for giving. Yeah, well, I, where I was sort of going, it wasn't necessarily climate smart, it would have been like um, another nonprofit. Seems mm -hmm. like a fine funding for this thousand mm -hmm. dollars or something, but that we need a fiscal sponsor, and mm -hmm. it's already an issue mm -hmm. with um, like they don't want to claim SAA. financial ownership, right? And usually they take a portion of that when you, yeah, you don't get, yeah, yeah in other words, we have to, you know, get you a thousand, we got to make it 1200 or something, so they get their, their, yeah, you know, administrative share. So, but let, let's continue that discussion because if that's sort of falls through, I can look into that. Okay, yeah. yeah I will, There's no way you should be showing all this at. Yeah, I think we all agree with that. I will say, just uh, frankly, if there could be a thousand dollars from another source, it would be way easier than doing it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Way easier. It, I would almost advocate more for like, spending our time advocating to pizza places to donate pizza every week and like all other things that I could just run through my normal budget, like pens and papers and all that stuff. As opposed to figuring out how to procure pizza once, mm -hmm. once every two months yeah. from through our purchasing office, which is mm -hmm. yeah, or the ARPA looks the, like. So I'll look at the ARPA thing, um, okay. getting an itemized like whatever would be good, and then every other folks think about other things we might want to spend mm -hmm. money on. It would be great too. Anything else with Prepare Cafe? Um, oh, and the last thing was we did have the tenth anniversary. Oh yeah, no, we're saying. It was really nice. It was supposed to rain that day, so I think a lot of people did not go. Um, so it's a small group, um, but it was beautiful. Um, they actually had a really nice, um, I don't know how they did it, but it was like a 3D printed photo of John. Like it was like he was, like a bust. It was it was it was cool. I almost just said <laughs> but like he like was like sitting like I actually I think I have a picture. Um, but they got it specially made for uh, the new Paul's 10th anniversary and then brought it to the overall just celebration um and let's see it was so it was like a statue yeah was it like a statue it was no it's kind of like i don't know i can't remember half the phone <laughs> it's like can't see it it's just um, like it was almost like a interesting. foam board almost but like it was so realistic wow. like yeah. it was very nice was and they had like a bunch of just poster boards behind with pictures over the years and well, your face. Well, you can't, you see it, yeah, you it. can't really tell from the picture how 3D it was, but it looked like he was leaning like this on the table. Um, anyways, but um, yeah, so then they were also selling t-shirts um, for Susie's role, it was potluck. Um, wow. Yeah, mainly the Kingston people came though. There was, <laughs> I can't tell by your face, like what? <laughs> well, it's just I haven't looked at a picture of John in a while. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it was very, it was very nice. And Holly's partner was there, who has taken over the New Paul's Cafe. Yeah. Oh, that's great! Awesome. Cool. When's the next one? Did you say? I did not say. Oh. I have to figure it out. So we'll be back at Redeemer, and it will be probably August sometime. Um, <clears throat> Do you have good success in the heat of the summer? Um, it's a hit or miss. It really depends if there's like fun stuff going on and like other things people want to go to instead. Uh, but we agreed to keep the five months schedule. It doesn't matter to turn out. Cool. All right. Anyone else have any other repair cafe? All right. Average and education or youth engagement. Anyone have anything on that? Slash. Is there an initiative we want to be actually formally advancing with outreach and education? Because I just put these things down the agenda, but if we're just like happenstance, no one did it. You know, obviously our department is doing a ton of outreach all the time. So Ellie's been teaching. Do you want to speak to that? You can. Okay. Uh, we do a lot of environmental education programs. Like during the school year, we do like all kinds of stuff. I mean, 
we just finished up same fishing in the Hudson and kayaking, uh, do hikes around Rotary Park, um, tours of the Nature Center, maple sugaring, uh, you know, when it's the right time of year, bird programs, recycling programs, all kinds of stuff. And right now it is summer camp. So there are environmental education focused summer camps that are happening right now. And I will also note that these environmental ed programs got started in 2004 or five. Actually, no, they didn't. 1998, they got started. Um, but we've been working with thousands and thousands of kids from the Kingston City School District, and the Kingston City School District has never paid us anything um, until now. So there's a science and technology or technology and learning, or I don't know her title, a woman named Melissa. And she met with Casey and I, this is our colleague, um, and they're interested in us and the city giving them a proposal for us doing their environmental program exclusively and working it into their curriculum. So we would rearrange our whole system. I won't talk to you about this yet. Casey told okay. me. Yeah, so yeah. kind of rearranging our whole curriculum, our whole strategy so that it aligns with curriculums directly only certain grades having certain programs, everyone in that grade to doing the program, not teacher by teacher decision. If one teacher signs up, the whole grade gets it. Um, and paying us for it, including possibly hiring additional staff. So uh, by the 17th of this month, we're gonna be putting together a proposal for the school district. And it seems positive because right now they actually pay Wild Earth and Show Ken Center, and they don't pay us. And so they <laughs> said that they were gonna work with us directly because we're here and we are, yeah local and on support of the city. So that's an environmental ed update. Uh, oh, did you, wait, where are we gonna talk about the fair? Yeah, I have. Um, oh, now yeah, I was gonna do that now. Okay. Um, I actually have two things to talk okay, about. Okay, uh, First, just to let everyone know, my email's not loading, but um, Tom Polk from the YMCA is retiring. Um, he has a successor. I was going to give you the name of the new person if anybody's interested. But my email doesn't load on my phone right now. Uh, but he will still be involved in biking clinics and, and as a volunteer. But he's just taking a step back as like a key person. And his retirement party tonight, he can else from 47. Really? Just oh, so. wow. You got to be going because it's the same time as this. <laughs> Swing by at the end, I guess. Um, and then the other thing was the Ulster County Fair, which is August 1st through 6th. And I'm a part of a big initiative with the Ulster County Climate Smart Booth. Um, and then also the Climate Row Booth that we did last year as my NYCP hat. Um, and so I'm attending those Ulster County Climate Smart Booth meetings as a rep for Climate Row, but also have information for Climate Smart. Um, so, the, so last year, I think actually this was third, second or third year they did this, but they have a Ulster County Climate Smart Booth at the fair. So Rena actually volunteered, I think last year for the fair, or maybe that was the year before, um, on behalf of Climate Smart Kingston. I don't think we ever received any points for it because she didn't follow up of like what we had to do, but um, they're looking for volunteers. They have a whole Excel sheet that I forwarded everyone today with shift signups. Um, they're gonna be doing, they're still kind of hashing out what they're tabling on, but one of the key things is to just Educate the fair goers about climate smart communities, what they do, how you can become one if your community is not one. Um, and over the years, they've gotten two or three communities to start a climate smart community through attending, like meeting them at the fair. Um, they do a whole raffle um, situation and like you go around to the different nonprofit booths that I'm organizing um, and then you fill out a crossword puzzle, you fill that in for a raffle. And then, so there's some fair portions to it, uh, but it is educating the public. Um, and yeah, it should be good. Uh, but they're looking for volunteers, as many as they can get. They're also working with the Ulster County Climate Corps this um, year, which is new. Uh, so they'll have some students, but they're hoping to pair those students up with adults um, and have like, I think two or three people per shift. Um, and yeah, you wanna know more just, so, what? Go ahead. If you want to know more, read that email. Um, you could attend the meetings to help plan the content and, and all that stuff. 
But if you just want to sign up for a shift, you could do that. And then they're going to have a training in the next couple weeks. And the next planning meeting is on the 5th at 4 p.m. And what do we need to do to qualify to get like points? I don't remember what their process was, but it was like logging how many hours you were there, um, writing some sort of letter, and then like Kim or Mano Joe Green had to sign it or something. There was some sort of process to like certify you were there for real and not just said you were there. All right. But I can clarify. That'd be great. Um, cool. I see the email. Actually, so you don't see the email? I do. I, okay. I see that the email came through, yes. Great. And then, yeah, well, I will be there in a different capacity for Climate Row, which is another cool part of the fair if you just want to tell people it's there and to go visit us. But um, last year, we had nine nonprofits team up in something called Climate Row, and we uh, educated about all different things. Um, but this year, we're all picking kind of this uh, dollhouse we're going to do. Um, and so it's going to have different components of all of our different organizations. Um, Primarily educate people on the Inflation Reduction Act and the incentives that are coming out for that. It's going to have like a little mini Velcro heat pump that comes off of the wall. Huh. Um, it's going to have solar panels on the roof and Ukras. We're partnering with Ukra as well, and they're going to have you know mini compost recycling and oh. fill bins. If you need any more, I think you can. I remember you have yeah. mini ones too. <laughs> um, you know they're going to also have a little porta potty. If you need a little mini porta potty, I literally have a little. Oh, oh my gosh, I have a lot of, I get a lot of time. I don't know, I connect Sakura. <laughs> um, that's funny. But yeah, and then, what? Because I work with a lot of vendors and they're like, oh, do they want three whatever? Like, okay. 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 I'm like, what does that have to do with And it's squishy. It's like a squishy blue porta potty. Like, like a little squeezy guy? It's like the gym. It's like oh actual scale. I wonder how that would like relate to this. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not sure it does. But anyways, it's a toilet. Yeah, we can go with that. But yeah, so it's going to be kind of more of a uniform vibe, and Upper is playing a much bigger role than last year. They have a new person in their position um, who wants to work with nonprofits and the community and really educate people. So okay. very exciting stuff. Cool. All right, so people check their email and sign up for shifts. Anything else on that region and get education or youth engagement? All right, uh, clean electricity. So update on the buildings. I am still not in contract with NYSERDA. However, we have completed the scope of work and it is rooting through their system. So I'm waiting on their approvals, which means hopefully soon, but I have been in communication with NYPA and NYPA is very much committed to working with us and running the project. Uh, they already have given me a notice to proceed that I need to sign off on uh, once I have approvals. So that will be swimmingly once that happens, but I'm still waiting on that. Um, I would love to hear an update from Ellie, and I'm sure you all will because it was very heated last time about what was going on with some common in my, our solar panels and the credit. So Ellie, if you want to give us an update. I have the email right in front of me. Excellent. Okay, so I spent the last month in a back and forth with uh, Sun Common, who was working with Central Hudson, and we, I was also talking to Power Market because somehow um, the, we, we are subscribed to Community Solar through some buildings, and there's been mix ups about what buildings are subscribed and what accounts are subscribed, and all that stuff, right? So um, I'm just going to read this because, you know, this is not my specialty, but she says, uh, oh, from Sun Common, Nicole from Sun Common says, the registers were not set up correctly on the meter, as in the meter at 467 Broadway with solar. An order has been placed to collect the meter readings and to get the account rebuilt, which means since the system went online in August. A year ago. A year ago, we have not received <laughs> an, a, 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 an ounce of credit yeah. for the solar that, makes, that is terrible and makes sense. Okay. The price of, the price of energy that we have been paying for, and you see our bills every month, they're ridiculous. Sure Nobody is, you know, happy about this, but we are getting the bills for it. We credit it, credit it. They're redoing they're it. they're giving us they're giving us a, a bunch of adjustments on our bills. So we're getting um you're gonna have a credit for in perpetuity. 
Oh no, essentially. Okay. I, uh, is that happening now? Yes, yeah, so Nicole from Suncommon is working with Central Hudson to get, to quantify the exact amount of electricity we've produced over this period, um, to understand exactly how much we overpaid and to reimburse us in, in the form of credits on our upcoming bills for this. <laughs> So, did you tell that to Liz and I, Yeah, I did. Oh, I said it to Liz, I said it to Lindsay. Um, wow. Yeah, so. Did some comment, they blamed us though, right? So, um, I, I don't want to use the word blame. I did. Okay. <laughs> um, so, I called them in, I don't know, February or March, because that's when this, like, was kind of brought to my attention. And I spoke to the same the same person who's helping us now, Renee Nicole. Um, she uh, was assisting back then too. She was helping me, and she told me that the reason why we weren't seeing any of the energy that we're producing, you know, reflected in our bills in you know the form of significant discounts, was because it was winter time and the days were too short, and we weren't really producing. Which, I mean, I'm not an expert in solar energy. It didn't make sense to me, but I was like, okay, she works for the solar company. I'm just gonna you know, trust her, trust her. So she was like, oh yeah, wait until the spring, you'll see it really start to kick off the spring. Of course we never did. Um, so I got back into contact with her and she, you know, did fix it for us. But it was not that the days were too short to produce solar energy. Yeah, it's just like, insulting it just doesn't, I mean, it, the, the system is like a hundred and, how many panels do we have on the road? I don't know, 128 or something like that, massive array. It's supposed to produce like, I don't know, 60,000 kilowatt hours a year or something crazy like that. So the idea that we didn't produce anything from August to March because the yeah, days were too short. Sure. <laughs> like, is the day too short in September? But anyway, um, we are getting credited for our solar energy. Did anybody from Central Hudson follow with you from my No, I left a couple of tickets from Central Hudson, whatever that means. Um, and they were like, we'll call you back and send it to the business days. Okay. Which seems like a really long time given yeah. the you know enormity of Central Hudson, and I assume they have staff available in Central Hudson space, but they are probably back. Do you work for Central Hudson by any chance? But I've had issues with them. Okay. Yeah, yeah, not yeah. with those simple yeah. cameras every day because I live across the street. Oh, you yeah? do? Yeah. From the A Mark Center? Oh, cool. Oh, so, like, oh, yeah, no. oh, so was it Central Hudson was estimating bills and not meter reading? Um, or so was the meter not? I think it was that the meter was not hooked up correctly. I, I think that's what it is. I don't know. From this, I don't know. Can you? That's agree? egregious. <laughs> yeah. Does that's the egregious. registers were not set up correctly and the meter makes sense to. It could be the company so number was not yeah. put in the mainframe right system for the billing. At every amp I looked at it, the same numbers were there. And it was like 0.2 amps. Yeah, no, it's a 15 kW system. Point yeah, I don't point understand two. why we point have four. a Solar Edge app. There was like point. Eight. I was. I'm, there so was that's a bunch what of that numbers. means. It looked like it was measuring three phases, and each phase was a fraction was less than one. If oh. you've got a Solar Edge <laughs> system, that means that each individual panel is showing you how much it's making. Yeah. So you know exactly how much you should have been credited. So with the Solar Edge system, it should be very easy for them to precisely yeah. adjust your bill. Right now. Right, so if it's making that and it's not getting registered on the meter, then that's really like that is going to be really straightforward for them to say, oh, that's how much you made because the, the uh, they're not microverters, their optimizers on the panels are sending that information. They know exactly how much your system's producing. And this just in, as of, the, as of today, which is so we put the system on the line in October, August of last year. Yeah. As of today, we've killed 500 trees. And saved 66,137.5 pounds of CO2 emissions. Yeah, and they made 42.7 megawatt hours. 42,700, right? It says light, it says this month, 5.23 MWH. This year, 25 MWH. Lifetime, 42.7 MWH. And right now, this very moment, it's 71 degrees out. And it's making 2.71 kilowatts right this second. So the good news is that if it was a problem with the meter, but your panels were producing, it sounds to me like you were sending that power, you were using and sending that power to the grid. It just wasn't getting counted properly. Hence the credits. Right, exactly. So the accounting was bad. 
but you did make the power. So you were you were using it and you were sending it. So you, you still did the good work that the app is telling you you did. The problem is that it wasn't being accounted properly and they can fix the account. So oh, this isn't is the job. Um, it's <laughs> both their jobs. <laughs> it sounds like the, so I don't know whether Central Hudson put in that meter or whether Sun Common put in that meter because it depends on the job. Sun Common was very quick to blame Central Hudson. I'm positive. I think the, I think verbatim it was this work is our fault. Just wondering, asking for a friend. <laughs> Well, okay, I, I, I do want to give some common credit. They were very quick to help me the second time I brought the issue to them. Not the first time, but the second time. Well, they realized that I have more projects that would love to be funded by yeah. done by I also want to say that um, there is another part of this email. Apparently, there was an issue with our system, and we lost about 40% production in, uh, from April 5th to June 5th. So I'm just going to read that as well, because... Um, she says, on a side note, I wanted to share that one of our service technicians popped by the site last week to have a quick look at the system and saw that there was an arc fault on one of the inverters. The power cycled, he power cycled the inverters, cleared the fault. This fault caused about 40% loss in production from April 5th to June 5th. It's great to be checking the solar edge pl monitoring platform, but it is also important to check the physical components, the inverters, from time to time to ensure that they are um, on and working. Not all errors are going to shut on monitoring. So I asked her if that means we should have technicians coming by regularly, whatever regularly means, yeah. and she said yes. So couple every couple of months, she suggested we have somebody come look at her system. Okay, so somebody explain what an arc fault means. Go ahead. Okay, so when you have a problem, an arc is when the, a, the current that, so if you have two wires, right, and you have a battery, and you ever sent, you want to get the electricity to go from the battery through the wire and back to the battery, you connect the wires, right? And that that's that's a circuit. If you have the wires close enough to each other that the electricity can jump from one wire to the other wire, that's an arc fault. Usually that means that there's a, a like a short, like that, like there's a problem with the wiring or a squirrel chewed on something, or when they attached it, they didn't attach it securely enough and there was a loose wire somewhere. Those are the kinds of things that cause an arc fault. I don't know why they would well, okay, just so, be resetting it. Right, why, yeah, okay, so A, why would it happen randomly after six, eight months? Mm -hmm. That two, probably means that something came loose. That's what I would expect. Okay. Or, or a squirrel, you could say squirrel. Right? But, but if a squirrel, so, but if a squirrel so, shoot it, then they should fix whatever a squirrel shoot on. So. That would be my guess. And it could be, it could be that there was a fault in the inverter, which wouldn't be their fault at all. Like that wouldn't be the, or it wouldn't be, yep. some company wouldn't be culpable for that. That would be like, oh, we need to, we need to send it back to the company yeah. to anyone. So I need to hire yeah. a company to come and just check our stuff? They need to teach yeah. you, not you specifically. We can't go on the roof. You don't need to go on the roof. On the roof. No. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Is it at all on the roof? There's a piece oh. of equipment. Oh. There's a, piece on, of on. There's a piece of equipment called the inverter, yeah. um, which takes the power from your roof, changes oh, it, changes it so that you can use it inside, sends it into the house, and whatever you don't need is get sent to okay. the car. So those, there, you probably have three of them. Yes. I don't know, for an, for an array this big, yes. three, four. Mm -hmm. And so those should be somewhere accessible from the ground, probably yes. on the outside of the building. The what you need is whoever does a maintenance check at that building anyway needs to get like if you have a, it could be a custodian, right? It could be it could be an electrician, but it doesn't have to be an electrician. Um, we do have an electrician, but it doesn't necessarily have to. You don't have to be paying electrician rates for this. What you need is for someone to look with their eyes at the boxes and make sure it's not showing any problems. If it's green, it's good. If it's red, okay, then exactly. There's so a little light. Well, we need to be trained to do that. There's just a, there's a little light on the system. If it's green, you're good. If it's red right. or flashing, it's not. Good. I will email Nicole again yeah. and ask her to send somebody to train Julie and I to do that. Excellent. Yeah, it could be the two of you. It could be anybody, but just like and somebody who, guys. yeah, somebody who, who might be on Our site electrician. anyway. Sure. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Our electrician. Yeah. You can also do that. But it would just be like every couple of months at least, just to like put eyes on it, be like good, 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 great. Like it should be. Also, I don't know as well. Yeah. I'm surprised they didn't send you an automatic email. <laughs> That since they should have told you about that. I am shocked that there was an arc fault no, 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 getting in the Yes, I did. I would expect that. Okay. Is it the solar function to come with 
So you got them. Yeah, just make sure to check. We don't have a maintenance contract with them. Yeah. So, so no, yeah. no one year warranty or they should be showing it one in, in one year after their equipment. I don't have a contract with that. Most residential panel companies that I've talked to, they say they, they keep an eye on it and they watch over their equipment for that reason. But even if I had a warranty, what am I can't hold what am I holding it to? That the, 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 the loss for the something. Time got damaged and we lost 40% of our um, power that we produced for, what was it, three months? Two April, months for June. April to June. Two. Okay, I'll check on the warranty. Um, so this, thank you for bringing this full, full circle. Sorry, it took so long. Um, so they're sending someone out to, to repair the issue with the meter? Is that the next step? Yeah, they are, Central Hudson is coming to repair the meter. Okay. Um, Sun Common, the, the representative of Sun Common I'm working with, is working directly with Sun Hudson to get us uh, credited and rebuilt and things like that. And then we will be sent um, credits on our uh, upcoming bills. It seems to me that it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. Because if, if there were anything else, the electricity has to go somewhere. Mm -hmm. you know, it's going to go to Sun Hudson or, or something burns. Right. And then what did you find out about the, the CSA credits, I mean, your solar credits? Oh, so um, in addition to these issues, we also have, it's Power Market, right? Yeah. We have, we're working with Power Market, and Power Market went through and subscribed a number of our accounts to Community Solar. Now they subscribed 467 Broadway, which is the Andy Murphy Center, to Community Solar, when it already had an array on the Oh, so good at that. So, uh, according to Power Market, it was Central Hudson's responsibility to communicate to Power Market mm -hmm. that they were not able to uh, subscribe this building to Community Solar. That never happened, and we were subscribed to Community Solar for, I don't know, maybe about a year until very recently they took, uh, they removed our subscription to Community Solar from the building. So we should not have been subscribed. Yeah, they shouldn't have been able to do that. That's yeah. weird as hell. But, <laughs> but again, power market was like, not our fault, and put it on Central Hudson. I do think they're right on that one. Oh, that, yeah. I think that's a you know. Because it sounds like what happened to me. Is that what happened to you? No. I, they, I, I, do you I, have solar on your building? No, no, no. But oh. I, I, I subscribed to community uh, solar. And when they went to, you know, to get me into the system, uh, so the Hudson said that I didn't exist, that I had, you know, not, not, uh... You didn't have an account? I didn't have an account. But your, you know, your lights were working. Oh, so I sent, I sent a copy of my last bill, July, uh, June, uh, May, June, to Power, uh, Power. Power Market? Power Market, yeah. Power Market, because they didn't yeah. confront Central Hudson. And the Power Market told me that Central Hudson kept apparently doing this much more than and, you know, they, yeah, they, they it's the new customer. Yeah. yeah, and I I did talk to Central Hudson uh, before I talked to Prime Market. I talked to Central Hudson about the community solar fees that we were seeing on our bills because I didn't think that we should have been subscribed to community solar. And the representative from Central Hudson that I spoke to told me that we were automatically subscribed to community solar because we were in a community choice and aggregation program, which That's is of course true. not true. <laughs> um, so um, I think it's kind of boils down to it's a big mess and we're working it out. Um, power market fixed the community solar issue. Sun Common is fixing the issue with the solar meter. We are getting rebuilt. The building has been removed from community solar and hopefully that's the end of the problem. Yeah. Hopefully because I'm about to start three more projects. Yeah. So I'm doing the roof of the pool, the roof of the Rodham Center and a huge Brown map system on the Wilbur Avenue of DPW property. Oh. Um, and I was told that I'm not able, well, we, or by procurement, we're not able to do what's called design build. So we're not able to say, Dear John's company, I want you to design something and then build it. Because John will then say, Well, of course, this project's going to be huge and it's going to be awesome and I need to build it for X amount of money, right? So you can't do that. You have to design, we have to go procure the design. And then we have to go out for separate procurement for construction, which we didn't do on the Andy Murphy Center. But from now on, we're doing it. Um, and so 
there is a way around that, and that is working with NIPA. So NIPA has permission to do design build. They have the authorization to do it. So uh, I have a conversation with their carbon neutral team, which is what I'm working on the carbon neutrality buildings. And then I have I now have a request into their solar renewables team to see if they'd be willing to take on these three projects. So hopefully they say yes, and then we won't have to go out to bid, we'll move them forward and spend $850,000 by the end of the year that, on those three sites. That you read a pool. And read a pool. Did, did you discover that? Because that was one of the case studies we chose for the solar mapping presentation. Um, 100% was okay. Dang it. Okay. <laughs> oh, you can, did you send that to me somewhere sometime? Well, me and Tom, that guy, had yeah, presented yeah. it. And that was oh, one of the case studies. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. Okay. Well, if it is as a result, then I could say, like, you know. It's happening. Yeah. Yep, it's happening because you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the Rhino Center, which is a bi level roof that's new. And then the field at Wilbur, but the issue with the field at Wilbur, and this is a Wilbur Avenue, it's a big field, we're going to talk about the amount of Valley Manor, or whatever it's called. Um, it's a humongous field there. Except there's a really, really, really important sewer line that runs through it that I have to leave a gap. So, I, and my engineer told me I have to leave a 40 foot gap down the middle of the field. 40 foot wide. 40 foot wide. Mm. Look. Look, I said, um, just to be clear in writing, do you really mean, because he said 20 feet either side of the, <laughs> of the line? And I said, just to be clear, is that 10 feet on either side? Or 20 feet on either side? So it's one, 40 feet total, which basically bisects the entire thing. For yeah, a once in a lifetime circumstance, where I'll need to get mega equipment in there to fix a very, very deep and important sewer line. Yeah, that's not right. It's deep. It's very deep, which is why they're making me go 40 feet wide. That's kind of fair. <laughs> that's not fair. So, how many panels are they cutting down to? That's what we're going to figure out with. with uh, Hey, maybe I could do like a huge carport and they could drive the equipment under the carport. Just kidding. Carport tables. Uh, <laughs> they cost That's not a bad idea. But the bifacial panels are. They're not going to be lifting digging. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's true. I guess they would. You'd have to make it extremely high. Extremely high. Well, you're doing it, you should put it on top of whatever structures you got there. Well, there's a salt chair, which you should put this. Why not? Oh, yeah. There's, there's the round. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. I see that. Okay. All right. So that's where we are with renewables. Um, CCA is still waiting on approval from the PSC. So there's really nothing to report with CCA right now. Uh, does anyone else have anything on clean electricity? Uh, oh, this has nothing to do with clean electricity of buildings, but I'm gonna say it anyway. And maybe, and this is third party, so maybe somebody else knows the details, but I heard a rumor that by 2028, Home Depot is going to be shifting 90% of all of their um, motorized equipment stuff, like we whack <laughs> into leaf blowers and everything, to electric. To battery. To battery. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Which means that Lowe's is going to do it too. The vintage is keep up with Joe's. <laughs> By when? It's surprising that Home Depot did it first because they, okay. they backed a lot of really conservative candidates. So that's interesting. They just, that just means they can see which way the market's going. Yep. And that that's where the money is, or they wouldn't be doing I it. I don't know what the battery pump or the electric gun um, or chainsaw. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. We got electricity. All right. Um, okay. Yeah. Education and workforce opportunities. Thanks. <laughs> what what we heard in here stays in here, right? Nice to meet you. Uh, all right, education, and workforce opportunities, and green jobs. I didn't have any on that. And just that uh we um Melissa and I continue to present on green jobs locally for mostly young people, but but not a specific workforce thing. Um, I believe the county is preparing to do some kind of um, county level green jobs um, mobilization, but they have not shared those details with me just yet. I know they are doing the um, Ulster County Climate Corps for the summer, um, and that that is based mostly out of Kingston, I think. Um, I will be meeting the Climate Corps next Wednesday, which should be um but yeah i don't have anything else on that one. and if you all are interested in your i mean if the city's doing the school education and sustainability stuff if you would like nyc to come to any summer camps or programs 
It's called Working for Change, Green Jobs to Fight Climate Change. And it's about, we presented to, I think, eighth grade and up. It's mm -hmm. about green jobs and um, the need for jobs. Yeah. It's a rarity, interestingly, that you work over eighth grade. Oh, interesting. That's okay. cool. Okay. Anything else on the workforce to green jobs? Uh, any updates on our city fleet? No updates. Uh, there is still a need in the parks department for an electric van, but uh, budget issues are, you know, still an issue. Okay. Very expensive vehicle. Um, EV infrastructure, the Foresight EV charging station is in. It is not networked yet, but it is in. Um, the Prince Street ones online, I said that already last month. The others are going to happen in the fall. Um, there's something else I wanted to say. I can't remember what it was. Can't remember. The one downtown on the visitor center keeps giving us issues, but I gotta work on it. The one at the uh, county building, I've stopped using because it's just not receptive to my phone. Oh, yeah, that's the county's one. It, it's like, oh, that's the county. To them, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, any zoning updates? Uh, yes, yes, there are so many opportunities. The um, Common Council Laws and Rules met Thursday and they passed several resolutions on this. Um, they've broken out rather than just do a, um, a resolution to pass the environmental review, the CEQA review, and then the, the form based code. Thereafter, that there has to be, a, I believe, a 10 day period between those two. What they did, they also had several other um, resolutions that passed. One of them was on a parking supply and demand reduction strategy. And the other one was on short term rentals, which was largely unchanged in the, in the code. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you have to go back into the code and you know see what they redlined the previous time and carry that forward to, you know. Time is rapidly running out if you're going to make comments. I mean, I think they're done. They, they approved the resolutions and they approved the secret resolution. There was a little bit of a uh, little bit of drama at this meeting. Um, and that was over um, major site plan reviews. They they streamlined the minor site plan review process so that a lot of that can be done administratively, and that's part of the form base kind of to do that. So that's not really an issue. That's like a lot line adjustments and small matters. You know, you put in a shed in your backyard or something like this. And you know, that's, yeah, it just has to meet the code and that you're good to go basically at the administrative level. Major site plans are a different can of worms though. And um, there's, uh, if, there, if it's a walkable neighborhood or there, what's the other one there, you know, community. CBN, well, there's two different types of residential um, community neighborhood plan. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Uh, if it's one of those two, uh, it requires a hearing. Otherwise, it doesn't. And that opened up a question as to uh, public input on major site plan reviews. So several of us spoke. Um, I spoke, Emily Hauser spoke, uh, Sebastian Politeri, formerly of the CAC, and President Riverkeeper spoke. Um, Michael Kudraski, who's a uh, planner, he spoke as well. And some of the people indicated they could support this, some of the council members, but um, one council member was adamantly opposed to public hearings. So it, the dynamic kind of switched in a different direction, and suddenly everybody was opposed. <laughs> Except for one council member that wasn't part of the committee <laughs> and couldn't vote. And at that point, um, Emily Hauser got up and did something with her phone, was showing, I, could, I was on Zoom, so I wasn't actually there. And she was pointing, showing them something that was incorrect, part of the basis for this decision. She felt it was incorrect. I felt it was incorrect too. It didn't meet um, the secret process, for example. Which we don't have to go into dive into the weeds on that. I don't think you're all night. But um, Emily was asked to leave the meeting. Uh, 
Now, so she sort of got shuffled out and they had a vote. And um, the key thing on this is more, the council members that had objected to the most vehemently asked, uh, agreed that a six month look back on this would be reasonable. So I think we're going to take that up at the CAC. I think uh, either me or Emily Hauser or Ted Greasy, one of us will bring this up at the next CAC meeting to support that, to support the look back period. Uh, so uh, several of the common council members who were in favor of the um, public hearings uh, said that would be a smart move. And six months, we may have a different common council, right? So, We'll just see what happens in six months. And I don't think was, the votes are there. We tried counting the votes, and votes are not there to overturn this. You know, unless we start twisting arms <laughs> all over town doing that, but I don't think that's going to be successful. So that's where that is at. Um, they, they will have the vote on the GEIS, that's the uh, environmental review, and then shortly thereafter, the review on the full form based code, and it's done. So, and then a, a six month look back. There's other items they want to look back on too, like see how the short term rentals play out, for example. The parking study will have to be followed up. Um, there'll be a few things. Yeah. So, on the parking study, did you <clears throat> clarify my understanding? Was it reduction in supply or increase? Uh, it was for minimum parking requirements to be included in site plans. And form based code generally do not include them in parking requirements for encouraging walkability. Gotcha. Right. So that, that became the thing. A lot of people were, well, we're looking to park. And yeah, so it went like that. And they said, okay, we'll do a parking study and then that'll determine you know, what it'll be you know, at a later date. And they're forming like a parking task force. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. I didn't mention that. Yeah, they're forming a parking <laughs> task force. I mean, on that point, if you just go look at Uptown, you know. I drive around looking for parking for 10, 20, 30 minutes. Maybe you want to be on the parking time. That's right. <laughs> now accepting applications. <laughs> okay, great. Anything else on the Yeah, I just wanted to mention so, solar mapping um, had our alumni night, which was a full year. We had these cohorts. We started in fall 21 and went to Oh, 22? Yes. Um, and so we had three presenters from different places that graduated that presented on what they're doing since graduation. Um, and I think it's very informative for at least the zoning folks to review that recording. Um, it was about an hour. I can also send it to just the whole commission if everyone wants to see it. Um, but the town of Cortland in particular has done so much with their zoning. Um, and they're actually they're actually also now working on uh, creating stipulations somehow uh, for all new construction to require solar. Um, and so they're very like require for, solar or solar readiness. Solar readiness, I think. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that all is in the recording though, and he directly. Uh, James Crichton, the deputy supervisor and town councilman for the town of Cortland, who graduated in fall 21 of the solar mapping cohort, uh, gave a presentation on everything they were doing and uh, like read statements from their zoning code. And uh, so it was very good. And I think that Kingston should look at that. Do you want to follow up on that? Yeah, I can. I, I, can I don't know if anybody else wants to see it. But... Yeah, I, I would. Okay. Yeah, definitely. So if you want to send me the link, and then okay. we should probably connect on what they were, what they're doing, mm -hmm. how we can carry that over yes. here. Okay. Yeah, I probably include that in the look back here as well. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. Anything else on Zoe? Bike share. I only know secondhand, but I believe that at the last laws and rules meeting, they made the decision to not allow any bike shares until they figure more out. I don't know if that was a moratorium. Do you know? That was a different meeting. They had two laws and rules meetings, uh, Wednesday and Thursday. That was the Wednesday meeting. I believe that's correct. Okay. No. 
So, I, that's what I had heard, but I didn't attend that meeting. Okay. So that's hearsay as well. It's, here, it's only hearsay on my end too. Yeah. So unless somebody has more information, I've been told to just wait and see. So we will all wait and see. Um, moving on to managing resources, Kingston Organics. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. um, so we are up to, so the last time, last meeting I reported, we had 288 people registered. We're up to 450, 448 people, which is 190 families. Um, and Cody Lake Food that was just here. That's how I remembered his name. Oh. He is registered for organics. Did you memorize all 190? <laughs> I, I actually remember the name. I have to put, yeah, it's a, there's a long reason why. 478? 448. 448. Yep. Um, and so uh, if you haven't noticed, all of the sheds are put up around town. Um, they are at 11 locations. They have the totes in them. I have designed welcome packets for everyone who is registered. They are all waiting for folks to pick them up at the Midtown Center. Um, registration is ongoing and it actually starts July 10th. So July 10th, uh, everyone will be able to start, and then these buildings will have them as well. And I also secured tabletop countertop pails for our buildings as well. So there'll be countertop pails like in this room, which is a lunchroom technically, um, and then there'll be like a bigger tote downstairs where everyone will dump their stuff into there, and then that will be part of the route. Uh, we drove the route the other day, and the whole process from starting at the yard to going to every single location and like sitting and waiting and the amount of time that it would take to like undo everything going out to opera dumping and coming back uh it takes three and a half hours which means that then they can get it done in one shift which is what we wanted to see and they actually get it done before lunch which is what we wanted to see because they start at six and even before doing the route they're going to go and get the street counts so um it, timing's working out everything's coming together and by the time we have our next meeting, we will have launched and then we'll have information about what it's like. <laughs> um, so that's great. So if you, if you live in Mason, you want to be part of it, I know at least one of you is registered. <laughs> oh, who could that be? Is that all the meeting members? Yeah, so that's going on. Thanks for your uh all right next is resiliency stuff things to my park improvements uh i don't remember if i knew the last time oh the last time the bids were going to open on june 7th and it did so this was we put out the bids for the the engineer to do the design for kingston point and we got one response and that one response happens to be the same firm that did phase one so bernier and larios has been awarded phase two and they will be our engineer, uh, which is great. And so uh, we are uh, in contract negotiation with them. And then their uh, site reconnaissance and design will happen this fall uh, and into the winter. And in the winter, we will go out to bid for construction for next year. Um, flooding and raise. So I think at the last time i probably mentioned that we applied for a raise grant uh this was a multi-million dollar grant for doing a number of different things basically funding all of our weaving waterfront projects got it so it's like 22 million dollars um it's an incredible amount of money and it involves multiple things including kingston flight rail trail phase two which basically if you know what kingston flight rail trail is it starts here behind round of savings bank that winds down through the avenues down to to Garrigan Drive, and that's phase one. But it basically stops there. Phase two will bring it from there, up behind the trolley museum, out along the Strand and out to the point, and then beyond the point, up up North Street and connected back to the Empire State Trail going up north. It also includes um, elevating. East Strand Street, physically, elevating Delaware Avenue, physically, um, and multiple other connections along the way, including fixing some of the reasons why we have flooding uh, all the time on the Strand. And it's likely that I'm going to manage the project. Lucky. That's not official yet, so I don't know. 
how do you deal with that, like old Savannah? Well, here's the issue, right? If you raise the road and don't raise everything around it, right, what happens to everything around it? Yep, that's why I'm doing this with my hand. <laughs> yeah, there's not a lot of drainage. That's what you have to do. Yeah. Have kind of like really robust drainage under the road. And how do you also stuff. not have the water coming down from the land stop at your elevation? No, that's what I mean. Yeah, that's yeah. why you need culverts. Yeah, culverts. Yeah. 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 How exciting. What were those were there? East Strand. So everything from the 9W, like from like Mariners to where Millen used to be, like uh, all along the, the, everything along the Rondo. Right. And then Delaware Avenue, which is everything from the bottom of, of the light at Delaware and North Street all the way out to the, yeah, to the oil terminals. Oh. Which also then impacts making a simple car project, because if I raise the road, that impacts how I build the wetland. All right, right, right. right. Which means I got to get all organics done this year and every other project that I possibly am working on was done this year. <laughs> but I will keep folks posted. It has not been official that I've been given the project that I've been job on this, but it's probably likely. So any of the Weston and Samson? Yes, a lot of the design is already done. Right. The one I recall was something that looked like the East Strand Elevated Highway with the last exit to Sycamore Street. And yeah, I don't know. That, I mean, it really looks... None yeah, of those... That, that would not impact the, the water going in or out because it would be raised high up. Yeah. yeah, none of... I don't... The designs for that, the road elevation, I don't think are actually completed because there's so many things to consider for the tie-ins. Yeah. Like every single thing that we need to get tied in and not like, we're not, just to be clear, we're not talking like from the floor to the top of the table. We're talking a couple inches. Yeah. Okay. But, but still. And I know yeah, it's still a little bit skewed down unless you have good reason. I imagine Rob is still talking about the bulkheads. Yes. Yeah. This unfortunately does not include bulkheads. So we're applying for a separate grant called PROTECT, which stands for something. Is that should that be in here? Um, that... Probably not, because I don't know if we're actually going to consider it. Okay. You know, I'll keep you posted on that. Um, all right, new business. So, CFA letters of support. We're passing out two things top pack, bottom pack. This is requests from of this commission for letters of support for two projects that the city is submitting. Through the consolidated funding application, okay, one each, two different types. Okay, yep, one each. Um, two projects we have submitted for in the past, we were not successful. What we're trying again, and one project is new. So we're but we're only actually doing others to support for two of them. So I'll let folks grab those so that you're seeing what I'm seeing as we're seeing it together. First, we'll look at the one that says "City of Kingston summaries" on the top. CFA project summaries. Sorry, I didn't mean to think. Are uh, there on that? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you should have one highlighting and one without. Uh, okay. <laughs> We're looking first at the one without the highlight. Let's take that another one. Okay. Okay. So the one without the highlighting that says CSP product summaries on the top. This is an FYI. We are reapplying for the skate park. Uh, we're not currently asking this board for a letter of support for the skate park, uh, but just enough where I that's happening. And um, so we, the second one we have already submitted, and actually I think that this board probably submitted a letter of support last year for this exact project. Uh, we have revamped the, re the request a little bit, um, but basically as a reminder, this is to demolish two condemned buildings that are city owned. They are not occupied. They're on North Street. They're like basically absolutely in the water. Um, and take those down and put in a kayak dock and access to the wetland um, the board, with a boardwalk on it. And the second project is to fund future organic spaces. 
and that would be to fund phases two and three, which would end up being commercial and residential curbside voluntary collection. So there are two examples of what that letter, those letters would look like. We'll start with the one that says kayak dock on the highlighted sheet. So if this commission, which we will be voting on each of these separately, if this commission would like to support the kayak dock one, this letter could say something like, on behalf of the Kingston Kingston Commission, I would like to lend my support to the City of Kingston CFA, First Kingston White Wetland Project. Funding from the EPF would be used to demolish two condemned city platform houses, restoring these properties to open space and construct the parking lot, public access boardwalk after the wetland. We would put in our reasonings, which I would look back at last year to see what our reason was last year, and that's the same thing probably. And then this project, we can kind of read the rest. Questions about this one? Any, uh, does anyone want to make a motion of whether or not you want to support the letter support for this one? Yep. Motion? Motion. I'll second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Excellent. Now, I'm typing this up. Uh, it should have read this the way it reads here. Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Can I ask a couple questions? Yep. <clears throat> so across the rondout, there's a full line, correct? Yeah. Near there? Slatesburg. Slatesburg. Is it near there? No. What, what's the difference between a boat launch and a kayak? Uh, this would be for non-motorized access. Non-motorized access? Yep. So it would be a, basically a board dock where you can walk out and fish or just sit, meditate, or walk or beer, whatever. Not beer, beer. I will neither confirm or deny. Uh, okay, anything specific you want me to say in the reasoning for this project, or should I just look back on what we did last year? Great, okay, moving on to the next one. Organics, on the other side. Uh, should you support it? I'd like to lend my support for the City of Kingston CFA for funding of the DEC. Climate Park Community's funding will allow the City of Kingston to implement phases two and three of Kingston Organics. It's a citywide multifaceted food crops and organics diversion program designed to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, reduce tipping fees, and reduce landfill waste, et cetera, et cetera. I'm reasoning for supporting this project. Anyone want to make a motion to support this CFA? I do. Who's asking the reasoning? Uh, for this one, you can give me reasoning or you can entitle me to fill in reasoning. I was just asking. Okay. I'll let you Okay. Yeah. All right. Can we get a second? No. Any discussion? I think one of the reasons uh, we should include is just, a, I off the top of my head, I don't remember, but like the first percentage of greenhouse gas is coming from food waste. Yep. It's really high, and that would be something to include as an incentive for us to get the board on. Yes. So it's also listed in our climate action plan as a priority. It's one of the 20 actions. I'll list the greenhouse gas emissions, which I will reference from the actual plan. Um, Great. And I'll probably say something like, it aligns with New York State's Climate Act. Okay, so we have a first and a second. Any other discussion? Should that say NIS under phase one? Yes. Anything else? I do. Go ahead. Um, in, this might not apply to residential. Is this mainly for residential? And commercial. And commercial? Yep. In commercial and Institutional, and what I mean by institutional is colleges. Um, when I was in college, I did a study on the waste stream, and a lot of it was liquid. And uh, is there anything that might help people just pour out the liquid into something instead of into the trash? It's because the liquid was like yep. a factor of at least 10, and I was seeing somewhere near 80% of the weight. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, oh. one of the instructions on the, in our current phase one is we're not taking any bulk liquids, um, but otherwise, that's a good point. I haven't told people dump your like 
I don't really know how I'm going to do that. It's hard because when I don't really want people trading stuff out right there yeah, either because it's, it's just going to be a. <laughs> but that's yeah. not a topic to include in the letter, though, right? You're not asking if you. I don't. I don't know. Well, right I'm now we're just, we're now we're in discussion. I would say let's. If it doesn't pertain to whether or not it's included in this letter, we can talk about that after. But we'll finish the vote here. Any other discussion on the letter? Uh, so we have a first and second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. And those opposed. Excellent. So yeah, I mean the liquids thing is definitely a concern. We were there for an actual dump at, at Opera, and this huge, huge truck dump dumping from Organics, which is a private company, and it was uh, super gooey, like unbelievably mm -hmm. gooey. It was like a bath of water just came out of all food. And that's the thing, we are paying by the ton. So, and I have the bags and they're biodegradable bags. Now we're tipping them right now. My plan is that the, the laborers are not going to be lifting the bags out of the, the brown totes. They're going to be rolling the tote to the packer and tipping it. I don't know, but it is a good point that I don't want everyone's wet gooeyness to go in there. Yeah. But I don't want them to dump the wet gooeyness on the ground before they go in. But is that also why you broke up this into phases to see yes. how it would go with phase one and then learn things? Yeah, yeah. Yes. There, must be some, there must be something to email the people who are yes. participating. Yeah, I just have to think what I want to say. Yeah. Because I know what happens on my counter. Because I leave my stuff for a week on my own counter and it gets, and I have clear, two clear containers. Two gallon clear containers, and I get this much goo at the bottom of each one. Mm -hmm. We dump the whole thing. Yeah. Which means yeah. that that because if I were part of this program, I'm going to still use my backyard. If I were part of this program, I would take my whole thing and I would dump it in, which means an inch of goo would be going in. Seems like then market opportunity, a strainer inside your, you know, collecting the scraps. Or a oh, oh, piece it. of thick bread at the bottom of your computer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, to the point, we could be on this forever. But okay, so we have two letters. Everyone's in support. Thank you very much. That's fantastic. Um, new business. We had also. Oh, by the way, those are due July twenty eighth. We'll get those applications in, and then we're not going to find out till December. Um, the third one. Mm -hmm. the for us, yeah. We're not doing that one here. No, unless you all want to. What do you ask The skate park? Oh. I mean, it is a low carbon activity. <laughs> <laughs> you want to keep kids from being on their phone and computer all day. I'm not talking about skateboarding. If you all want to go on a skate park, let our support. I'm not going to stop you. I would support a skate park from a climate perspective. I'm not saying we have to do that personally. Like, well, what would I put in the reason? Yeah, it's like supporting bike stuff. It's like supporting bike stuff. All right. I'm up for it, but I don't need to make problems for other people if we don't want to go into it. Is that a motion? Sure. I move that we have a letter of support for the state park also as a climate friendly activity. Is there a second? Will it look weird coming from us? Like, are they just saying yes to everything? Like or like, well, that's why we weren't asked. If, we weren't asked. Okay. if it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. My motion is. <laughs> well, it's been built with the recycled, with the porous pavers, right? And the recycled concrete and everything? No, no. I don't know. It's been proposed as a climate friendly construction project. Oh, that's cool. I'd be happy to see you on that. I supported it, that was true. I need a second at this point. The, you know, the I'll second it. Fly hatch. Okay, so we have a, so Cal made a motion, and Karen is seconding it. Is there a discussion? Well, is there any way to make it green? What were you just talking about? Well, <laughs> like if you're coming in hot with caveats, I don't know how it's going to go over. Okay. No, I don't think it could be a caveat, but I think it would be fair to say, like, particularly if implemented in XYZ ways, this is a you know climate friendly project that encourages climate friendly activities for young people and that will support you know liquid health and you know. Alternative to uh, to the use of computers, video games, and all the other things they would be doing. Right. Is that climate? Yeah, is that climate? Climate changing a, a, a field climate is pretty greenwashing. Yeah, you know, like that's it's not the the it's not like egregious. We're not building like oil derricks out there, but I wouldn't say that that's a like climate specific. 
It feels like we're using climate as a way to support something that we otherwise just like, and now we're kind of looking for ways to make it shoot more into climate. Yeah, it's Yeah, I agree. It feels like a stretch. This is the most controversial. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was a skateboarder as a kid, it was supported in general, but I feel like coming from us, it doesn't feel quite aligned with the mission. Agreed. And biking is about mobility and accessibility. You can use skating as transportation, but not the skate park. That's true. That's true. Other comments? So there's a motion and a second. I will call for a vote unless you want to remove your motion. No, no, I want to see how the vote goes. <laughs> you can vote against it. I don't want the okay, So is there any other discussion before we vote? And I will just say there is precedent in other years for us having voted down a letter of support from Climate Smart for similar reasoning. So uh, all in favor of writing a letter of support for the skate park CFA. Please read it down. Three. All opposed. Four. We have four. Oh, you voted yeah. yes. Four. Opposed. Four. How did you vote? Abstain. Are you serious? <laughs> <laughs> that's enough. Okay, so that's that's fine. I'm comfortable with that. So, so we have four and four with an abstention. Okay. That, that covers that. Um, I take the Swedish one. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. One question with this, with the heritage area, that, that, that's a barely functioning program anymore. Uh, does that have to go to the Heritage Commission too? I don't know the answer to that. Okay. You're, not, you're not doing this? No, no. Ooh, it's not. Blue Fan is doing this? No, Jack Stumaker. Okay. Um, okay, so other new business was Farmer's Market. I was at the farmer's market the week before last and realized there's very few in any recycling containers. It feels like low hanging fruit to toss the recycling containers in the farmer's market. I don't think that's a city authority. Oh, it's okay. not our farm market. Oh, really? What is it? The farmer's market. It's on city property, though. No? It's on county property. County property? Is that true for both of them or just the uptown market? Because there is a Kingston waterfront market. Yep, but it's a, it's a private event. I see. Uh, so they should be providing their own but recycling. But at that one, at least, there should be recycling containers in the park already. Which, I think there are. Yeah. I think there are. So that one, it would be a discussion with the market manager. Okay. Which could be a letter from Climate Smart saying, hey, we didn't see any there. Mm -hmm. Or it could be just a starting conversation and they could be like, here we go, they were here and here. Or that's the city's responsibility. In which case, then there would be a... No, it's not. It's this. No, it's not. It's this. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I don't know if the commission wants to take an action on it, or if you want to follow back up with them, or if you want me to look into it, or I'll follow back up with them, and I'll report back next month. Very good. Um, okay. Announcements, communications, events, and updates. Anything from the Ulster County Climate Smart Committee? That's bad. No. Okay. Um, oh yeah. Hello. Roberto, are you going to Ulster County Climate Smart Committee? Will I be on it? Have you been going to the committee meetings? Oh, sorry. Oh. No, it's just that. Uh, oh, okay. I haven't been on it for a year. So. Okay. Um, I also wanted to just bring up, uh, I got a, uh, an email from Melissa Avery about climate solutions. <laughs> Oh, so you were on. Right, right, right. Oh. I forgot about that. I just need to pick my partner up from work. Will I screw up Cora? No, you told her. That's very considerate. Climate Solutions Week, I got a, yeah. sort of a push for us to do something. What is it? Hmm. Oh, it's in September. It's in September, bro. Let's do something. <laughs> what is that something going to be? I don't know. <laughs> we, got, we got a small amount of time. I think it would overlap with Job Electric Week or something too, but for me that's not October. All right, well, I can put it on next month's agenda, but I yeah. want people to be thinking about if this commission wants to do something, which could Where's be anything. Let's also so, actually, I'll read the, the note because I think it's important to, um, to have context. 
So this is an email from Frisso Babcock, who's with the Sam Hudson Valley. Sam Hudson Valley organizes the Climate Solutions Week each fall, made up of climate and environmental related events put together by many towns and organizations across the Valley. If your community or any organizations near you are planning events along similar lines, we would love to connect for co-branding and amplifying. If not, we invite you to get involved and create and submit events of your own. Last year's Climate Solutions Week events included trainings, book discussions, Zoom presentations, theater performances, <laughs> open, open houses, film screenings and panels, mixers, focus groups, garden tours, etc. Past events have covered a wide range of topics, including conservation, pollution, green investing, managing evasives, municipal composting, uh, solar energy and EVs. Can I add that they're amplifying or whatever, they have a calendar on their website that's like oh, shows all of the events and then I think even maybe a map. They, Sustainable Boston Valley doesn't really provide much. It would be us doing like that. Okay. Putting on. Yeah, okay. they post stuff on their social media. Right. But it's it would be really on us to. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm just uh, like, it would be easy for me to pull something together related to composting. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, but we can, I'll put it on the next month's agenda and folks yeah. can think about like what I'm really actually pushing for the some sort of theatrical per performance personally. Maybe a performance about composting. <laughs> An opera perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> rock opera. Oh. <laughs> um, all right. Any other announcements, communications, events, or updates? Oh shoot! I forgot another thing in the old business. I said, or new business. I said we were going to talk about moving meeting. Um, oh yeah. So I'm just put this out there because it seems like our meetings never start at five. So if it's really hard for people to get here at five, we should just move the meeting time to like five thirty, or even five fifteen. <laughs> but like, there's no point in us having a meeting that starts like every single time. It's no, there's nothing holding us to the five o'clock. We should just move in. Mm -hmm. Well, does Kevin have the meeting to go to sometimes after? No, I'm not doing the public uh, safety anymore. I think people are late just because people are late. I think if we say it's 5.15, they'll get here at 5.20. Yeah, so I was going to say the same thing. Okay. I personally get out of work at 5, so sometimes I leave early to get here. But if I have a deadline and I have to finish something before I come here, then I have no and Dan, what time do you finish work? Technically five. Right. So you leave work early. You're leaving work early. You're leaving work early. Better would be leaving work early. Yeah. Is five fifteen enough? Because I prefer earlier to pushing it later. Right. Because mm -hmm. I have some. Right. Would fifteen minutes technically do anything? Um, do you all want it later? <laughs> no, well, I would like to be on time. The thing is, no one else it might it might not matter as much to everyone else, but it matters to me. Yes, no, yeah, totally. it matters to me, and it matters to people who have decided to log in at five, and we don't yeah. start till five oh six. No, you're right. You're and that right. means every single meeting, I'm looking like I'm running a tardy meeting. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, that's right. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Five five thirty. So we can either keep going, and everyone needs to like make it a priority to get here by five to start by five. Or we need to move to 5.15. If you put it at 5.15 and everyone just keeps five in their head, maybe it won't. Maybe that'll help. Or you yeah, have a meeting at 5. Why don't we show here at 5 and then the meeting officially starts at 5.15? I think that would then, do it. Then, then we have some breathing room. Yeah, I can also yeah. just tell you all we're keeping it at 5, but I can see really I can get it to 5.15. I think that's right. We should. Yeah, we're keeping it at 5. All right. All right. I think well, that fixes the live stream problem. Like if you say yeah. it it, like the stream will start at five fifteen. Yeah, that's different than. Yeah, sounds good to me. Yeah. Know. So we should know that. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So. So it's the same. Five. Yeah, it's the five. five. <laughs> okay. My head's spinning. Um, okay. <laughs> any social media? Well, wait, wait, wait. But for the notes, if anybody online right. reviewing that, yes. okay. well, they need to know it actually starts at five fifteen. Yes. Well, what am I? You're, you're putting in there five fifteen, and everyone else is closing their ears and getting your phone. Getting we can. Oh, all right. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the meetings will officially start at five fifteen. Okay. 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 Okay.
Uh, any social media postings that we want to post? I'd love for you to post more composting and guys to push more? it. More? Yeah, okay. I feel like I'm spamming it. Spam it. Okay. <laughs> You know, I loved hearing those, how many trees we've planted with the Andy Murphy um, mm -hmm. panels. I think that kind of information is just priceless. Yeah. Can you send me a little blurb? Yeah, I, I wonder if I can send you a link. Now. Oh, yeah. Screenshot the app. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. it'll just have a link. I have something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You want me to hand this to you? Or... Oh, no, I, I will screenshot it and then yes. I will send it to you. Mm -hmm. Anything else people have? I don't think so. All right, any other business? Uh, let's look at next month to make sure we have quorum. It would be July 26th. Is there anyone who is aware that they will not be here? Good. Okay, so you're hearing none, then we are still having it on July 26th at 5. Five o'clock. Is there any other business? Do we do a social media person? Just it. We just did. Um, uh, so uh, we're going to promote with the solar production at the Andy Murphy Center. So the the greenhouse gas benefits or the yeah solar Andy Murphy solar production solar production, yeah, solar solar production this far and also uh, another push for composting. Uh, food scrap. Thanks for organics. Okay. We're good, then I need a motion to adjourn. Done with. Yeah, we're going to second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right, everybody. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 Thank you.